In this video, I'll talk about how can we stack UV islands for the duplicated geometry. You can see in this object, there are obvious places where we can stack UV islands. In this video, I'm going to show how can we do that. And also, how can we bake out normal map for them. So, let's start with these inputs. What we want to do is unwrap it before we duplicate it. So, I have these objects that are duplicated these two bolts and the flange. So what I want to do, first of all what we can do to make it a little bit less busy, we can delete these two merge nodes and in a single merge node you can just add objects. I'm just going to now point to the bolts. Now we have three objects in one merge node. Now let's put down a connectivity node. And in connectivity node, you create the class attribute based on the connected islands. You can see that basically in three objects, we have three numbers, 0, 1, and 2. And now we can just easily put down a blast node and point at this attribute to delete everything that's not with that attribute. So, what I'm going to do. Go to the edit parameter interface. I have a preset, but how you can set it up is just take the integer, just drag it inside here. You can call it like my custom that L apply except now we have this slider, and all we have to do in a group we have to point at the class attribute, which is this attribute that we created just. Now we have to just point equals, and with equals we have to just point at this slider. So what you can do is just take this and drop it. Not that, but relative channel of reference. So it's going to delete everything that's inside, but you can just more easily just with equals like that. So you don't have to write in all the channel reference yourself. And now you can see with this slider we control what we delete and what not. And of course you can just go here and save it as a preset. I have a preset, basically the same thing. You have to basically select it easily and that's all. So with this blast node, you just going to duplicate it two times and change the one. So we have each one of these. So this I'm going to have flange, bolt 1, and bolt 2, like that. Now I just want to pipe them into the right places that I'm copy the flange and the bolt. Oh, I something not, not right. Flange is this one. And the bolt is that one. So I got it all confused. This bolt, custom bolt one, custom bolt two, like that. Now we have this one, a little bit less busy. So with this, we can easily, with object merge, we can basically start with this one, or this one, whatever. And what we want to do is use either auto UV or whatever. If you don't really care about UVs that much, you can just auto UV. You can see we're getting this result. And now we can just put down UV layout. And with UV layout enabled, we want to create maybe point it like in here because these are little details but we maybe want to give them more of a resolution than just a, compared to the whole object so they are not because if you would unwrap it actually in the actual size of it of the whole object these bolts would get really a little amount, amount of UV space and to be very blurry so we're just going to create it a little bit bigger details 
one thing to note is actually that we have to use auto UV and layout actually at the before the connectivity so do not uh, disconnect them like I had so make it to it actually follow the connectivity nodes so that's one mistake I made so now you can see in a UV that these UV UV islands are stacked if you select the first one you see that only one layer and now we have to see all these stacked together so what do we can we do the next now in this we want to actually separate this this pipe from all the other objects so what we can do is put down connectivity node again and with connectivity node we have class again as you may see you can see that our pipe is actually with the number zero so what we can do just with this one I actually want to create we can create switch let's switch but actually split this split you can just point add class equals zero like that without the spaces so what you can see we have separated this from the flanges and all the others so we can unwrap this so for this you can do an auto unwrap that would create not so good results actually if you put down oh, that's that last one auto unwrap if you take a look at it these do not look all that good so what you can do there are some pretty obvious places where you can cut them you can do it by hand or what I like to do let's put down a measure saw measure saw is going to basically make sure it's at the area it's going to calculate all the area that's with the biggest area polygons I'm going to create the area attribute and we can actually filter it so with the area attribute we could put down a group expression and in group expression let's go to the parameter interface let's put down a float value channel let's call it my custom 2 and now what we want to do put this to the Vex expression relative channel reference. And what we want to do is just point at area is smaller than this. So what you can see if we change this, but it's very finicky and it's very small number. So you can see it's actually going to first select the smallest amount of polygons and then select the biggest one and if you go to the bigger ones it's going to be inverted so what you want to do just select these the big ones and now we can just group mode this is a group one so in group mode we want to promote group one to the edges and we want to include only elements on the boundary so these are going to be our UV cuts and now with these UV cuts we can put down auto seams we want to now cross cut it so like along this one and we want to do it procedurally so I just going to put down auto auto seams so if you go to the edge geometry into the edge selections and you take like these purple ones are going to be the seams that's going to create this node so we want to go to the something like that where it's only cuts one big one big line so something like this it's going to cut it you can see it's only one big line is cut and now with these groups you can put down a UV layout no UV 
you reflatten and then you reflatten at the seams you can select the group one and, and seams if we go inside you can see we have unwrapped it and if you disable the manual layout it's going to automatically also lay it out so as you can see we have one problem which is I guess this one the group expression didn't catch this one so we have to go back and select this one too now we can go back to the unwrapping you can see that it's automatically unwrapped with the new groups selected so now what you want to do is go to the equivalent to the equivalent to limit the amount of space it's going to take the our pipes so you take a look at this you can see that we are taking first three rows so in here I'm going to select first they select the not select the last three and so this is going to be our space for our pipes and this is going to be space for our flanges and bolts so what we can do now well we can normal map these bolts because they do look a little low we want to maybe smooth out these edges so what we can do let's go to the very top of this right where we started let's transform let's select into the into this object so it's going to blow out our object what we can do we just put down a barrel mode barrel clear the group and exclude in this instance since the shapes are pretty basic with 45 degrees it's going to be fine and then we want to just limit the amount of beveling maybe something like this so it just gives a little bit more softer look at all of these objects and now we can do with the laid out bolts at the UV this one we can just like these marry them together and now what we can do is just since we do not have to explode them after the poly bevel we want to give actually actually we do not have to explode it because they are already separated so but if say something like these three objects would be intersecting something like this we can do just poly bevel it merge them together the unwrapped low and high then you can explode you it's going to explode all of them together you see that they, they would move out of these together so that's when you have all these objects crammed together but since we do not have this I'm not going to use the explode node we can actually just go straight to the baking for the baking we have to set up our geometry so what I'm going to do create a high and low poly for that let's start with the high so what I'm going to do take this because we want all of our geometry that we're going to be in our UV map even though we're not going to bake anything in the normal map we still want it for it to populate the place so what I'm going to do I'm going to hold down the alt I'm going to create this dot so you can easily move it around so it doesn't go straight to the top so what I'm going to do put down the merge node merge it here so in here I'm going to put down this and then this one so now we have I wish he went something like here it is black here so we just have to put down a normal like that and now we have our high poly high poly geometry that we're gonna bake what we have to do let's put down a high now let's do the same thing with the low what we want to connect is this UV layout once we have our UVs 
and the same pipe that we have in here. Put down the merge, select this one, and select this one. Let's move it in here. This is going to be our low. Let's put down dot this one here. Like that. Now it's very easy. Also, it's going to be black, so put down a normal. So we have high and low. Now we just put down a lapis baker. It's very simple. High in the second one, low in here. So now let's take a look at these settings to make sure you have tangent flip Y so it looks correct in our viewport already. You can make it the 2K because once we import in Substance Painter, we can low res it. So I think I would. that's it. All the defaults. We just put on bake. So we have baked out our high resolution on our low. Now let's take a look at our normal map. Our normal map looks like this. So we have baked out all the soft edges in our flanges and bolts and left empty where our pipes are. That's exactly what we want. Now all we have to do is just merge together both of these objects back together and export it to the substance painter so that's pretty easy just put down the merge and want to merge together the unwrapped pipe and in the split node we, where we have divided it the second input is going to be our flanges so just merge them together in here so this is the same object only after the unwrapping in here see our Unwrap look like this. Now let's go to the Substance Painter and take a look. In the Substance Painter, I just imported this object, put in the normal map, and baked out all the rest of them. Now I just put down some material on it. Now render it out. You can see, so you're getting a nice looking result. And even with something, maybe let's put down to the 1k, we are still getting decent amount of resolution, especially for these bolts. On all of these, there are enough resolution for them. And one last thing I wanted to mention is that this setup is good for whenever we want to create other shape than this. So let's say we have this curve, and we we just create a completely new kind of object. Let's go to by the grid. Maybe something like this. Let's take a look at this pipe. And if you take a look at the merge result, you can see we are still getting the unwrapped pieces. And of course, you want to create these bolts at something different. You can just go back to the UV merge node, change the objects that you want to copy there. They're going to be automatically unwrapped and put on top of the UV map. So now we can easily change things and then they're going to automatically change the UVs too. So I hope you found this video useful. See you next time.